This is such a cool interview, such a nice guy. Coming up next, a founding member of a legendary band from the 70s and 80s tells the story of one of their biggest hits. Said that he wrote a song about a beautiful girl that he saw dancing at a live show that he was playing. The song has become one of the biggest in radio history. And to this day, the woman has no idea the song was written about her because he never met her. They've never been able to find this girl. He also tells tragically how the band that he helped start and created many of their biggest hits has been taken from him. He and the other founders, uh, they lost the band name and now a totally different group tours without any original members. They're not even from the same native land that this band all came from. It's coming up in an exclusive interview on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you've ever had your tape eaten by your boombox or uh, your Walkman, you're going to dig this channel. You're going to know exactly what we're talking about here. Potent Nostalgia 24-7. The story straight from the legends. Make sure that you subscribe below to be a part of this great music celebration. Click the bell so you always know when our, our cool interviews are coming out. I love interviewing these guys about their songs. Also, check us out on Patreon. We have full interviews there. We have a lot of other exclusives there that you'll enjoy. That link is below. So it's time for another edition of our series, Revelations. This is where artists and bands they take us for a truly deep dive into their greatest songs and albums. Details about the recordings and about the process you won't find anywhere else. That's a fact because they've told me so. This band has the most played radio song by an Australian band in history. Actually, the top two most played songs, Reminiscent and Lady. The band sold 30 million records. They've had numerous hits as well, like Cool Change and Lonesome Loser. For a cool change. Have you heard about the Lonesome Loser? And sadly enough, the band that was inducted into the Australian Recording Hall of Fame, singer Glenn Shurrock, songwriter and guitarist Graham Goble, guitarist B. Bertles, bassist George McArdle, lead guitarist David Briggs, and drummer Derek Pellucci, are no longer in this band. The group that controls the name, Little River Band, and tours under this moniker, does not have one original member. And most of the members are from America, not from Australia, where the band started. Our guest today, the co-writer of many of their biggest hits, Graham Goble, he says that the original members have wanted to regroup and tour for the fans but they can't under the Little River Band name. He also tells the story of writing the band's massive hit, Lady. He wrote it about a girl that still has no clue that the all-time hit was written about her. It's very strange. It was actually awarded the BMI Award for four million plays. It's now almost at five million plays, one of the biggest in radio history. Get ready for some phenomenal Yacht Rock stories coming up. It's just a, it's a tragedy for the fans especially. We want to see the real deal. We want to see those who wrote the songs, who created them, the real band. And unfortunately, this happens a lot in, uh, in music. As we go into this interview, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. Right now, you can get hundreds of pairs of glasses starting at, get this, just $6.95. Yeah, under seven bucks. You go to Zenny, you design your own pair, your own features. You can try them on virtually to see how you look before you buy. Check it out at zenny.com. Download the new app to your phone. Actually, click on our link below. Tell them that Professor of Rock sent you. Here's the story of the classic song, Lady. Lady also had roots with your pre-LRB band, Mississippi. And that was inspired by a lady that caught your eye as she danced near the, the front of the stage uh, during yes. a, a concert, right? Tell me That's about right. that. Well, this was prior to LRB. And when I came to Melbourne um, in 1972, uh, when I formed Mississippi with Beeb and Derek, um, we were playing uh, you know, the, the pub gigs around Melbourne. And usually we'd do a gig every night at some sort of pub. There'd be a live band on and we'd play. Uh, sometimes we would do lunchtime gigs at universities where people would come out for a lunch break and we would do a show. But we we always did 
um, like a matinee on a Saturday, you do a matinee an afternoon, two to five set at a at a local pub, and then you would then do an evening gig eight or nine o'clock at, at a pub somewhere else. So right. one day, one day, I, we were doing the Matthew Flinders Hotel in 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 Melbourne, and we do about three sets, and I noticed out on the dance floor there were two girls dancing together, and there was one girl that I thought was really attractive and, and I really liked her. This was 1973. And I um, was watching her during our three sets and then at the end of the afternoon, about five o'clock or so, we were packing up uh, uh, and she had gone, just disappeared off out, out of the room. I never ever got to talk to her or see who she was. She was just... I thought a very attractive person, and, and I, once again, while I was um, performing, I was just watching her. So then I went home, and with that feeling once again of what might have been, if you like, yeah. I then sat down, and at that point, I had experimented with drop D tuning, which is which means your your bottom E string and your top E string, you tune it down to D. A down a tone, and that gives you a different sort of um, chords that you can use. Oh, lady, I think it's only fair I should... So I was experimenting with that, and once again, just sat down thinking of her and wrote "Lady" in one sitting there. Don't be thinking that I don't want you, cause maybe I do. And wow. uh, and then we used to play it in Mississippi for a couple of years. And then when, but the problem I had was that when when LRB got together, Glenn Sharp didn't like the song, and I don't know why, but he just didn't like it. So I put it forward for every album. I put it forward for the first three albums that Little River Band recorded, and it was always uh, never it never actually got a position. And then when it got to Sleeper Catcher, um, I once again. I played it to the producer, John Boylan, and we had recorded nine songs and there was one spot left. And John said, uh, let's record Lady. So we recorded it. And and then when it came time for Glenn to do the vocal, he said, you know I hate this song, don't you? And I said, I, I know you do, Glenn, but um, John has picked it and we've, we're giving this our best shot. So to Glenn's credit, he went out and just sung the pants off it. Like he was just, <laughs> once again, the, 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 the a professional uh, musician as he is. For the winter, but don't have a cold heart. And it become our biggest selling single. It actually sold more as a single than reminiscing. Hurry, don't be late. Like it was just, it, it's been a massive song for us and loved by many, many people. Once again, I think it's, you know, somewhat of a standard. It's a very different song. And once again, it's got that Cole Porter influence in that the first two verses are different. Make time to make time, make time to be there. It's not like verse one and then repeat it for verse two. Verse one is sung by Glenn and then Beeb and I sing a different melody for verse two. And, but that's just what I heard. It wasn't like I didn't say, well, hang on, I'm now writing a watch the second verse. The second verse is what I was hearing. But Roy Orbison did that as well. I mean, he would just follow wherever the melody would take him. If it needed an extra bar, he'd just take an extra bar. You know, he would right, just, right. I'm, I'm trying to say something here, I'm singing a melody and it's going here, and we're supposed to be in the chorus, but I need another bar, so he would take another bar. And and that was my um, approach completely. Just let the melody take you wherever it needs to go. And so, inspired by this wonderful young lady who would be every bit of my age now, may not even be here anymore, uh, never even knew that she inspired the song. Wow. But, So uh, yeah, we we did that sort of Caribbean um, Latin, Latin sort of thing, which worked really well. And that 
I, I wouldn't take credit for that. That was probably it. Just came out of the recording session. Uh, we were recording it, and we'd come. What are we going to do here? And maybe the piano player Peter Sullivan played something there. Come to me. I mean, it's so cool because that's what Little River Band did so well. You guys, all your songs sounded distinct and different. Yes. You would have a band that maybe would have a hit single, and they would do part two and part three of that single, and and you guys Try always had something yeah. totally different. And yeah. Lady, I love how it builds when the bass comes in, boom, 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 boom. It's floating, yeah, yeah. By the time you get to that chorus, you're at peak performance. I mean, it's just coming out, Lady. A Glenn, like you said, beautiful vocal there. So lady, let me take a look at you now. And then the guitar solo. It's cool how it, it comes out a little earlier than you would expect from a guitar solo. Well, well the guitar solo w was actually part of my writing. I actually hummed that. Da, 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 da. I actually heard that as part of my composition. So... David actually learned that uh, because that that was on my uh, live demo that I sang to the band when it came. And I did that more on, on a number of songs where I would actually um, hum the solo that I could hear because it's a very melodic solo, you see. So... I wrote that solo, but David played it like amazingly. I could not play that. I could just sing it but i couldn't play it <laughs> i love that but i think mccartney used to do that too i think he would he would sing parts to people you know george yeah. this or you know you see you see that in their film but i did that as well on a number of occasions where i would hear what the solo could be and suggest to the guitarist in that in that in that way david and we would just sit down and he would just learn what I was singing and that becomes a solo. Yeah, I love that. It's it's unconventional. George Michael did that with the saxophone part for yeah. uh, Careless Whisper. He just heard, heard it in his head and says, so it's got to be da na 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 He went through like nine different saxophonists because it had to be just this right. But he could hear As, as Jerry Rafferty did on Baker Street. Right, right. I mean, that's the most famous example of a composer writing a sax part. Yeah, <laughs> and Bruce Springsteen did that with Jungle Land. He made Clarence Clemens play the saxophone part, and they spent, like, hours and hours. He said, nope, that's not right. It's got to be this. Yeah. And to me, that that's why it stands the test of time. And it's just a beautifully crafted song. The part that always gripped me, though, is, again, the, the bridge section. You call it the middle eight. We call it something different here in America. We always call it the bridge. But, but again, a, a phenomenal how you do that where I love it. Look around. Come to me. I have no answers. But know where I want to be. Well, yeah, very autobiographical that. I have no answers, but know where I want to be. <laughs> in, in, yeah. in, well, see, as all songwriting is, um, I have no answers, but know where I want to be. Well, that's my life. You know, I don't have the answers. I, I have a belief system that I think is fairly um, correct for me. Uh, but I've always known where I want to be, and I've always known what I'm heading toward. I look the lyric in there, I was born in the winter and called by a warm heart. Well, I'm Taurus. I was born in, in Australian winter in May the 15th. And my mother is the, I was called by a warm heart. That's talking about my mum. Oh, very cool. I was born in the winter and called by a warm heart. Because the, the, the called by a warm heart is 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 um well it's another way of saying 
um, loved by somebody unconditionally, isn't it? When you think yeah. about it, I was called by a warm heart. Well, if you're talking about your mother, then you're loved unconditionally. I love that's it. What that, that's what that lyric is. Thank you for sharing that. Feel for the winter, but don't have a cold heart. Then you go into that huge finale from there. I love how Glenn sings that last line twice. Yes. That's that's a and, great And the lyric touch. changes too. The lyric yeah. changes. Don't be thinking that I don't want you because maybe I do. Don't be thinking that I don't want you. Because maybe I maybe I do, but then the repeat is don't be thinking that I don't want you, lady I do. Lady I do. Lady I do. Yeah. He's instead of maybe it's the lady. Yeah. Yeah. So then you I make love that. that I don't want you, lady I do. You make a definite commitment to her. Puts a exclamation mark. Exactly right. And so so as a songwriter, um, I'm not a cut and paste songwriter. Even with our vocals, you would notice that there's no cut and pasting. Every chorus we sing has got a nuance in it. It's got something, a trill or something different because we sang all of our choruses. They weren't ever flown in. They were just always done differently. And so when we were doing things like that in our outros, I'm always adding things. And so to me, having the lady I do completes the lyric as a commitment to that person. The, the exactly. Part. And then the guitar solo, a guitar comes in again. And then the symphonic ending is just, it just takes you out of the song so effortlessly, so perfectly. Yeah. This band that has taken on the name and is, is using your name and, and likeness, even though there aren't really members who wrote or performed the songs originally. There's been a lot of legal action where he's got court injunctions, prevented us from playing. Um, he's now taken control of our Spotify page, deleted our photographs. He's uh, deleted our bio. He's tried to have this American band uh, make the audience believe that they're seeing right. the the original band. Um, he owns the name Little River Band. They perform as Little River Band. Uh, often our our um, music and our songs, our recordings, and particularly our images and our videos uh, are used to promote their shows. So people see Little River Band coming to town. They see Sharp. They see myself. Uh, and then they go and buy tickets. And then Wayne Nelson and his American uh, people walk out on stage. And for the most part, people don't realize that it's uh, not the original band. In fact, there are no original members there at all. And they're seeing this band of Americans um, playing yeah. under the name of Little River Band because they legally can do it. But they have successfully legally got injunctions to prevent us from playing. But we are not even allowed to mention, if we can't come to say we're the original Little River. We wanted to tour as the original Little River Band, but that's been legally prevented. So for the last 25 years, um, um, Steve Houston and Wayne Nelson have prevented the original bands from playing. And, and so they go on year in and year out um, with performances of uh, questionable integrity and, and sound, but the audience don't seem to care or don't know, and but they can't get to hear the real thing and they never will get to hear the real thing because uh, they stopped us. It was another top 10 hit in the US, released at the end of 78, was one of the biggest songs I think it was the 42nd biggest song is 79, Big Year in Music. And, you know, they bring quite a few hits called Lady. There were Sticks, there's Kenny Rogers. Lady. I, I had never heard those other two ladies because if I had, I wouldn't have probably pursued a, a song with the title of Lady. Because I always like to, 
Well, I mean, I know, I know that um, Buddy Holly had a song like Reminiscing, but I, uh, called Reminiscing, uh, it wasn't a hit for him, I don't believe. It's only you that I'll be thinking of. But right. I didn't know that when I wrote Reminiscing. I thought, well, I've written the first song called Reminiscing. As when I wrote Lady, I thought, I've written the first song called Lady. I, I didn't didn't know. Because there right. wasn't Google like we had back that we got now. I couldn't put right. put Lady into Google and find Kenny Kenny Rogers or Sticks. I didn't know. So that's exactly right. Yeah, that's true. You got to check out their new records, their new LPs. I'll link to the bottom. They've got the ultimate hits, and then they've got masterpieces. Two uh, full-length LPs uh, on, yeah, I think you can get them on CD or record. I'll link to both below. You got to get them. It has all the Little River Band's classic hits, the original recordings instead of uh, fake recordings. <laughs> anyway, um, leave us a comment about Little River Band, about this incredible, uh, they had such a great run in the late 70s, early 80s. And it's so sad what's happened to Share your memories about these songs, especially Lady. If you like our content, we do invite you to subscribe, to be a, a full-time part of this channel. We'd love to have you comment, and, and uh, we, we discuss this every single day, the classics, the stories, the memories, most of all. It's all about keeping the music alive. Till next time, three chords.